This video provides an overview of the major concepts covered in Chapter 2, Determination of Interest Rates. Chapter 2 is comprised of three key learning objectives. One, to apply the loanable funds theory to explain why interest rates change. Two, to identify the most relevant factors that affect interest rate movements. And three, to explain how to forecast interest rates. Let's begin with loanable funds theory, which suggests that the market interest rate is determined by factors controlling the supply and demand for loanable funds. Households commonly demand loanable funds to finance their housing expenditures, which can also include the purchases of automobiles and household items, resulting in installment debt. As the aggregate level of household incomes rise, so does installment debt, because households are more comfortable financing expenses when their income is relatively high. This diagram depicts the relationship between interest rates and household demand for loanable funds at a given point in time. Notice the inverse relationship between the interest rate and the quantity of loanable funds demanded by households. At any moment in time, households in aggregate demand a greater quantity of loanable funds at lower rates of interest. In other words, they're willing to borrow more at lower rates. Businesses need funds to invest in long-term assets. Business investments in new projects should be greater when interest rates are low as the cost of financing potential projects should be low. Consequently, businesses will demand a greater quantity of loanable funds at a given point in time if the interest rates are lower, as illustrated in this diagram of the inverse relationship between interest rates and business demand, DB, for loanable funds at any given point in time. Whenever a government's planned expenditures cannot be completely covered by its incoming revenues from taxes and other sources, it also demands loanable funds. Municipal governments issue municipal bonds to obtain these kinds of funds, whereas federal governments and its agencies issue treasury securities and federal agency securities. These securities constitute government debt. The federal government's expenditure and tax policies are generally thought to be independent of interest rates. Thus, the federal government's demand for funds is interest inelastic, or insensitive to interest rates. This interest inelasticity is reflected in this diagram, which depicts the impact of increased government deficit on government demand, DG, for loanable funds. The lines are completely vertical, meaning that it doesn't matter what the interest rate is. If a government needs money, it has to borrow at whatever the prevailing interest rate is. The lines can shift, say, from DG1 to DG2 when governments commit to more spending and thereby increasing debt. The demand for loanable funds in a given market also includes foreign demand by foreign governments or corporations. All else equal, a larger quantity of U.S. funds will be demanded by foreign governments and corporations if their domestic interest rates are high relative to U.S. rates. The foreign demand curve can shift in response to economic conditions. For example, assume the original foreign demand schedule is represented by DF1 in this diagram. If foreign interest rates rise, foreign firms and governments will likely increase their demand for U.S. funds as represented by the shift from DF1 to DF2. The aggregate demand for loanable funds is the sum of the quantities demanded by these separate sectors at any given interest rate, as shown in this exhibit. Because most of these sectors are likely to demand a larger quantity of funds at lower interest rates, it follows that the aggregate demand for loanable funds is inversely related to the prevailing interest rate. The term supply of loanable funds is commonly used to refer to funds provided to financial markets by savers. The household sector is the largest supplier of such funds, but loanable funds are also supplied by some governments that temporarily generate more tax revenues than they spend, or by some businesses whose cash inflows exceed outflows during a particular period. Although households as a group are a net supplier of loanable funds, governments and businesses are net demanders of loanable funds. This also means that the supply of loanable fund schedule, also called the supply curve, is upward sloping, shown in this exhibit. An understanding of equilibrium interest rates is necessary to assess how various events can affect interest rates. The equilibrium interest rate is the rate that equates the aggregate demand for funds with the aggregate supply of loanable funds. The aggregate demand for funds, DA, can be written as household demand DH plus business demand DB plus federal government demand DG plus municipal demand DM plus foreign demand DF.
the aggregate supply of funds, SA, can likewise be written as SH plus SB plus SG plus SM plus SD, where S is the supply of loanable funds by each of those sources. If interest rates were low at a given point in time, aggregate demand, DA, would likely exceed aggregate supply, SA, because the low interest rate would be appealing to borrowers but not to savers. Conversely, if interest rates were very high at a given point in time, DA would likely be less than SA because the high interest rate would be appealing to savers, not to borrowers. At any point in time, there should be an interest rate level that is equally appealing to borrowers and savers in aggregate. At that interest rate, an equilibrium occurs because aggregate demand equals aggregate supply. As time passes, conditions can change that will either affect DA or SA, thereby disrupting the equilibrium. By combining the aggregate demand and aggregate supply curves of loanable funds, we can compare the total amount of funds that would be demanded to the total amount of funds that would be supplied at any particular interest rate. At the equilibrium interest rate of I, the supply of loanable funds is equal to the demand for loanable funds. Now let's discuss factors that affect interest rates. A number of underlying economic forces can cause a change in either the supply or the demand for loanable funds. Changes in economic conditions can cause a shift of the demand curve for loanable funds, which affects the equilibrium interest rate. As economic conditions become more favorable, businesses expand and households spend more. This increases the demand for loanable funds. The aggregate demand curve then shifts to the right from DA to DA2, causing the equilibrium interest rate to increase to a point higher up the aggregate supply curve from I to I2. A slowdown in the economy has the opposite effect. Businesses and households spend less, thereby reducing the demand for loanable funds, causing the aggregate demand curve to shift to the left, which then causes the equilibrium interest rate to move down the aggregate supply of loanable funds curve. Changes in inflationary expectations can affect interest rates by altering the amount of spending by households or businesses. Decisions to spend affect both the amount saved and the amount borrowed. This causes an increase in the equilibrium interest rate. During inflationary periods, the demand for aggregate loanable funds increases, shifting the aggregate demand curve to the right from the blue curve DA to the red curve DA2. At the same time, the supply of loanable funds decreases and the supply curve shifts to the left from SA to SA2, which also increases the equilibrium interest rate, thus adding to the effect produced by the shifting demand curve. The Federal Reserve can affect the supply of loanable funds by increasing or reducing the total amount of deposits held at commercial banks or other depository institutions. When the Fed revises the money supply, it revises the supply of loanable funds, which affects interest rates. To reduce the money supply, the Fed reduces the supply of loanable funds in the banking system. Assuming no change in demand, this action places upward pressure on interest rates. When federal governments enact fiscal policies that result in more expenditures made than tax revenue collected, the budget deficit is increased. Because of large budget deficits in recent years, the U.S. government has been a major participant in the demand for loanable funds. A higher federal government deficit increases the quantity of loanable funds demanded at any prevailing interest rate, which represents an outward shift in the demand curve. Since a currency's interest rate depends on the demand for and the supply of loanable funds in that currency, the interest rate of one currency typically differs from the interest rates of other currencies. This exhibit illustrates the supply and demand curve for the US dollar and for the Brazilian real. Although the demand curve for loanable funds should be downward sloping for every currency and the supply curve should be upward sloping, the actual positions of these curves can vary among currencies. Notice here that the demand and supply curves are farther to the right of the dollar than the Brazilian real. The amount of US dollar denominated loanable funds supplied and demand is much greater than the amount of Brazilian real denominated loanable funds because the US economy is much larger than Brazil's economy. Now let's discuss the forecasting of interest rates. This exhibit summarizes the key factors that are evaluated when forecasting interest rates. With an understanding of how each factor affects interest rates, it becomes possible to forecast how interest rates may change in the future. For example, 
When forecasting household demand for loanable funds, it might be necessary to assess consumer credit data to determine the borrowing capacity of households. The potential supply of loanable funds by households may be determined in a similar manner by assessing the factors that affect earning power of households. Business demand for loanable funds can be forecasted by assessing future plans for corporate expansion and the current state of the economy. Federal government demand for loanable funds could be influenced by the economy's future state because it affects both the tax revenues to be received and the amount of unemployment compensation to be paid out, factors that both affect the size of the government deficit. In order to forecast future interest rates, we have to be able to forecast the net demand for funds, or ND, where ND is equal to the aggregate demand, DA, minus the aggregate supply, SA, each of which is comprised of their individual constituent components relating to households, businesses, federal and municipal governments, and foreign countries. If the forecasted level of ND is positive or negative, then a disequilibrium will exist. If ND is positive, the disequilibrium will be corrected by an upward adjustment in interest rates. If ND is negative, the disequilibrium will be corrected by a downward adjustment. The larger the forecasted magnitude of the net demand for funds, ND, the larger the adjustment in interest rates will be.